distributivity and rings. Recall that double struct Z is the set of integers. The main result we want to get to is that the set of integers together with addition and multiplication is a ring. So what is a ring? Well, a ring is a triple R plus times where R is a set and plus and times are binary operations on R satisfying a collection of properties. I'm going to do this with three sort of meta properties. The first one is that R together with addition is a commutative group. Now this meta property consists of a bunch of properties in itself, which we've already seen. So we have closure for all X, Y in R, X plus Y is in R. Associativity for all X, Y, Z in R, X plus Y plus Z is equal to X plus Y plus Z. Commutativity for all X, Y in R, X plus Y equals Y plus X. Identity. There exists an element zero in R such that for all X in R, zero plus X is equal to X plus zero is equal to X. And inverse, for each X in R, there is Y in R such that X plus Y equals Y plus X equals zero. We will usually write negative X for the additive inverse of X. So X plus negative X equals negative X plus X is equal to zero. The next meta property is that R together with multiplication is a monoid. This consists of the following properties in itself, closure for all X, Y in R, X times Y is in R. Associativity for all X, Y and Z in R, X times Y times Z is equal to X times Y times Z. And identity, there exists an element one in R such that for all X and R, one times X equals X times one is equal to X. The third property is that multiplication is distributive over addition in R. This means that for all X, Y, and Z in R, X times Y plus Z is equal to X times Y plus X times Z. And y plus z times x is equal to y times x plus z times x. The first of these is known as left distributivity and the second as right distributivity. Okay, here we see all of the properties at once. You could see the three meta properties broken down into the individual properties here. Okay, if we put all of the properties together, we get what is known as the ring axioms. These are all the statements that are true inside of a ring, uh, that are given to be true inside of a ring. There are, of course, additional properties that you can prove are true from the axioms. Some mathematicians do not include the identity axiom for multiplication in the definition for a ring. We always will. Notice that the set of integers together with addition and multiplication satisfies all these axioms. So Z together with addition and multiplication is in fact a ring. Z plus times also satisfies commutativity for multiplication. Right, that for all X, Y in R, X times Y is equal to Y times X. If we add this property in, we get what's called a commutative ring. Notice that the commutativity here is for multiplication. A ring always satisfies commutativity for addition. When we add in the commutativity for multiplication, then it's called a commutative ring. Okay, so we have that the set of integers together with addition and multiplication is in fact a commutative ring. In a commutative ring, left distributivity implies right distributivity and vice versa. So we only need one. We could, for example, cross out right distributivity because it's implied by left distributivity. 
The set of natural numbers together with addition and multiplication is not quite a ring because the set of natural numbers together with addition is not a group. The inverse property for addition fails. For example, the natural number one has no additive inverse in N. In other words, the equation N plus one equals zero has no solution in N. N together with addition and multiplication is known as a commutative semi-ring. Okay, a commutative semi-ring satisfies all the ring properties except for the additive inverse property. And since it's a commutative semi-ring, we'll leave commutativity in there as well for multiplication. And we also have to throw in the zero property. For each x in R, zero times x equals x times zero equals zero. Okay, so note that a semi-ring has this zero property in place of the additive inverse property. C sub n, together with addition and multiplication, where we're talking about the clock operations, is also a commutative ring, right? Plus and times are the operations of clock addition and multiplication on Cn. Remember that Cn is the set consisting of the numbers 0 through n minus 1. Okay, it's time to try an exercise. Determine if each of the following is a ring. Okay, now's a good time to pause the video and try this exercise yourself, then resume the video to check your answers against mine. Okay, so uh, first we have the set of rational numbers together with addition and multiplication. Uh, yes, this is a ring. How about the set consisting of just zero together with addition and multiplication, where zero plus zero is zero and zero times zero is zero? Uh, yes, this one is also a ring. The set of positive integers together with addition and multiplication. No, this is not a ring because zero, the additive identity is missing from the positive integers. And C24 together with clock addition and multiplication. Yes, that is a ring as are all of these clocks. Subtraction and division. Let R together with plus N times be a ring. If A and B are in R, we define A minus B to be A plus the negative of B. This is called a difference. If B happens to have a multiplicative inverse in R, then we define A over B to be A times B inverse, where by inverse we mean the multiplicative inverse here. This is called a quotient. From experience, one might be led to suspect that multiplying any element of a ring by zero would result in zero. This turns out to be true. However, this is not a ring axiom. Furthermore, it is not obvious that this is true. In order to verify that this is true, both the additive inverse property and distributivity are needed. So ring fact one. Let A be in a ring R, then A times zero is zero, and zero times A is zero. Let's give an analysis of this showing why it's true. Since zero is the additive identity of R, we have zero equals zero plus zero. This allows us to write A times zero as A times zero plus zero. We can then use distributivity to rewrite a times zero plus zero as eight times zero plus eight times zero. So we have a times zero equal to a times zero plus a times zero. Okay, these are the main steps in showing that ring fact one is true. Then let's write out all the rest of the details. We have a times zero is equal to a times zero plus zero by the additive identity property which is equal to a times zero plus a times zero minus a times zero by the additive inverse property, which is equal to a times zero plus a times zero minus a times zero by associativity of addition. And that's equal to a times zero plus zero minus a times zero by left distributivity. 
that's equal to a times zero minus a times zero by the additive identity property. And that's equal to zero by the additive inverse property. And there we have it. As an exercise, let R plus times be a ring with additive identity zero and let A be an R. Explain this time why zero times A is equal to zero. This is very similar to what we just did. Why don't you go ahead and pause the video, try this exercise yourself, and then resume the video to check your answer against mine. Okay, so we have zero times a is zero times a plus zero, which is zero times a plus zero times a minus zero times a, which is zero times a plus zero times a minus zero times a, which is zero plus zero times a minus zero times a, which is equal to zero times a minus zero times a, which is equal to zero. I'll leave it to you to fill in which properties were used at each step. Okay, you may want to pause the video one more time and try to fill in those properties. And then you could check them against the previous example that we just did. And they're essentially the same. Let's look at another example. Let R equal the set consisting of 0, 1, and X, where 0, 1, and X are distinct. And let R plus times be a ring with additive identity 0 and multiplicative identity 1. Let's construct the addition and multiplication tables for R plus times. We already know that the addition table must look as follows. Now, you may want to pause the video and try to draw this addition table yourself. If you forgot how to do it, uh, check back in the last uh, part of this lesson of groups and we have all the details there. Okay, so this is what the addition table looks like. Next, we can use ring fact one to fill in the first row and column of the multiplication table, right? Zero times anything is zero and anything times zero is zero. So that gives us all these zeros in the multiplication table. We can now use the fact that one is the multiplicative identity to fill in the second row and column of the multiplication table. So the second row, we are just copying the input row. And for the second column, we're copying the input column. Now, for the last entry, which is the hardest, since x is equal to 1 plus 1, you could see that from the addition table, we have x times x equal to 1 plus 1 times x, which is 1 times x plus 1 times x, which is x plus x which is one, again, using the addition table. So we have one for that final entry there. What we have shown is that if a ring with the three distinct elements, zero, one, and X exists, with zero, the additive identity, and one, the multiplicative identity, then the addition and multiplication tables are determined. They look like the tables shown here. However, we have not shown that these two tables actually define a ring. We do know that a ring with three elements exists, namely C3, together with clock addition and clock multiplication on a three hour clock. If we replace X with two, we get the tables for C3 together with these clock operations. We have shown that there is essentially just one ring of size three, namely C3 together with clock addition and clock multiplication. This ring is commutative, as we could see by looking across the main diagonal of the multiplication table. 